My name is Markus Meyerhofer. I am a bioinformatician with NBIS, uh, specializing in uh, mostly invariant calling and cancer genomics. And uh, for this uh, session, which will be about an hour, we will begin with uh, just a couple of slides on QC of sequencing data. And then you will be working hands-on with uh, the past QC tool and exploring the results of that. All right, so uh, the raw data from the sequencer, you have been uh, already looking into the uh, sequencing procedure and what happens and uh, what it produces. The sequencing reads uh, will usually be available in a fast queue format, which are text files in which each read uh, is represented by four lines. The first line being the um, an identifier for the read, the second line being the actual sequence read, third line being a placeholder for additional information that we don't actually usually have any use for. And the fourth line is the quality scores for each base in the read. Now, <clears throat> these quality scores are not human readable, so you don't need to worry about looking into these text files. Instead, um, you would use a tool to read them and summarize statistics on the qualities. Now, each of these quality scores can be translated into an integer representing the quality score on a FRED quality score scale. The quality score is a logarithm of the probability of an incorrect base call. And you don't need to learn uh, the equations and you don't need to learn to read the qualities from the FASTQ files, but you do need to get um, acquainted with the FRED quality score scale. It comes back in other places of uh, the analysis work as well. And get the feeling for what kind of quality score represents acceptable quality. To get an idea of the quality in your sequencing run, you would run something like FASTQC, uh, which will um, collect and display statistics of the quality scores for you. The sequencing reads are generated simultaneously, base by base, during the sequencing experiment run. And therefore, if something goes wrong or if quality deteriorates, you will see that as a deterioration of quality along the sequence read. And therefore, it is useful to make this kind of a figure where you have the position in the sequencing reads on the x-axis and the thread quality score of each base on the y-axis. And this way you can display a distribution of the quality scores over your entire set of sequencing reads per base position. This is an example of a worse quality where we have a good quality throughout the first set of bases in all the reads, a quality score well above 30. This distribution, by the way, you see the average here, you see the medians as red lines, and you have the interquartile range and the 10 to 90% quantile, I think, something like that. Um, and a base quality score above 30, largely. So only about one in a thousand bases would be wrong. And then as the sequencing run progresses, quality deteriorates somewhat, and you have a large fraction of your reads featuring a quality score below 20 on basis towards the end of the read. And that quality score below 20 means you have more than 1% probability of incorrect base calls. And that will come back as you continue to uh, perform variant calling and have an effect on the quality of the end result. 
So compare that to the good qualities where the quality score remains well above 30, even towards 40 throughout the entire sequencing run and the entire length of the reads. Now, depending on what you are going to do with your sequence data, there's quite a lot of things you would look at for quality control. This is one of them, but there's another set of things that you would look at depending on what you want to do with your data. Uh, today's example is based on whole genome sequencing for variant calling, small variant calling. And uh, we will continue with an exercise uh, on variant calling tomorrow using the same samples that we are going to use today. And uh, for variant calling, you would look at the quality score distribution as in the example. And uh, I would recommend that you also look at the sequence length distribution to see that it doesn't deviate from your expected sequence length and also at duplication levels. And these are things that you can read more about in the instructions for today's lab. Uh, if you do RNA-seq, for example, you would look at other metrics as well and more about that on Thursday. So please go ahead and uh, get started with the today's uh, exercise on QC. Um, with fast QC, you will get results from a number of model, uh, modules. The per base sequence quality is one of them, but you will also get multiple other things that you can read more about and explore in the lab.